Welcome to the November the 16th, 1999 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring you the history of our city and some of the important people that are causing that history either to be made today or that they've made it in the past. Today is the first for us. This is our first observation of the Native American Indian Heritage Month or History Month. The month of November is always considered the history month of the Native American Indian. And we're very pleased on our history tape number 381 to have a very special young man that is from Grand Prairie, Texas, and a graduate of South Grand Prairie High School. Mr. Harold Rogers, we want to welcome you to the set, young man. Well, thank you, ma'am, for having me here. Wonderful. Appreciate it very much. Wonderful. And Harold, we'd like for you to look out into your camera and uh, tell us a little bit about your genealogy, uh, name your parents, and if you have brothers or sisters, uh, would you name those at this time, young man? Well, Ms. Jackson, ma'am, uh, like you said, I did come here from Grand Prairie, Texas. I was born in Dallas, Texas, right down the road mm -hmm. in 1969. Mm -hmm. I am the son of Marshall and Joanne Rogers. And uh, I only have one brother, and his name is Marshall Rogers, Jr., which he is also a graduate of South Grand Prairie back in 1982. I was the South Grand Prairie mascot uh, back from my class in 1988, and mm -hmm. with some of the regalia that I brought here today was some of the stuff that I wore back then also. All right, that sounds wonderful. And uh, you came from Dallas. Uh, did you attend any of the other uh, schools here in Grand Prairie, Texas, other than South? Uh, yes, I, well, I was born in Dallas, but I was raised here in you Grand Prairie. You were raised here in Grand yeah. Prairie. And tell us the schools you've attended. Well, I went to Sam Rayburn Elementary School. I also went to uh, Andrew Jackson Middle School, then here to South Grand Prairie. South and I also was fortunate enough to be able to go to college also. All right, that is wonderful. Now, uh, your bio tells me that you're a fancy dancer who travels and competes at various things. Uh, we'd like for you to, first of all, uh, give us your tribal heritage, if you'd like to tell us anything about that, and how important you think it is that you uh, keep a record of this and you trace it, and how wonderful your parents are to help you uh, classify all of this. Well, yes, ma'am. I'm of the Navajo Nation, and we are originally, we say we are from Grand Prairie, but we're originally from Gallup, New Mexico, on the reservation around New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Mm -hmm. And my parents, you know, I appreciate them very much. You know, I love them very dearly. They've been a, a very important uh, facet in my life. They have always been behind me 100 uh, percent throughout my schooling and my education, not only uh, in the Western culture, but also within my native uh, culture, you know, not only teaching my own language, uh, teaching me the different ways of our people, the Navajo tribe, but also to learn from other tribes also and to listen to them and to respect what they have to say. And, you know, because it's a very important piece of history. Not too many people realize or understand that American Indian people are everywhere within not just Grand Prairie, but uh, throughout the Metroplex and throughout the country. They're woven into the tapestry of America, aren't they? Oh, yes, ma'am, they are. I, I would like for you to tell me if you have memories or do you still have grandparents, both paternal and maternal, that you'd like to talk about? Well, unfortunately, I don't have any grandparents. They've all passed on into right. the spirit world, but uh, I did uh, get to know them very well. My name, Harold, I was named after my grandfather on my mother's side. All right. uh, unfortunately, I never did get to meet him because he passed on before I was born. Okay. But my middle name, Pete, is also my grandfather on my father's side who I'm uh, named after also. And I got to meet him, but I never did because he died at a young age also when I was uh, five years old. It's uh, hard to have memories of all of that, isn't it? Yeah, but my grandmother on my mom's side, um, my grandmother, she passed on this same month, uh, I believe this same week. And uh, it was just about six years ago in 93, and she's been, you know, she was my inspiration very much. She 
taught me the way. She was very, very traditional, you know. She was educated, but she was also very traditional where uh, she spoke fluently within the Navajo language, but had to learn the English language in order to coexist with uh, uh, modern day culture. Okay. And um, as you were growing up in uh, Grand Prairie, Texas and going to Rayburn and Jackson Middle School, what kind of memories do you have? Uh, were you accepted as uh, just a regular student there or did you have a special distinction because you were Native American Indian? Well, I, I don't uh, believe there was no uh, distinction at all. You know, I was mm -hmm. just uh, as an ordinary person, just like everybody mm -hmm. else, a student just trying to get by. Uh, most of the time I'd be mistaken for uh, Mexican or Hispanic, you know, yes. which I don't mind at all because there are proud people also and, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, there was something special and uh, my parents, they tried to instill that in me uh, that I was an American Indian, you know, uh, but I feel that uh, I just didn't realize it because I did uh, try to focus on my education, but I also was uh, uh, living and playing with uh, other uh, kids in my neighborhood, you know, they were just a different mixture of people. And going on to South Grand Prairie High, how exciting was it when you got to become the mascot of the Warriors of South Grand Prairie High? Well, um, uh, just to add another little piece of history, my brother was also the mascot back for the class of 82 also. All right. Um, I thought, uh, since he did it, I thought, well, I thought it'd be a legacy too and put my name into it also. You know, I, it was a great uh, stint being the mascot. You know, I wish I could have did it more than just one year, but I appreciate it because uh, not only did I uh, meet and enjoy my new friends, but also my old friends, you know, they appreciated who I am and I, I, don't, I hope they didn't think I was a, a person of higher standard because I was the warrior mascot or anything, but I just, uh, I just really appreciated going to all the football games and the basketball games and uh, being a cheerleader slash mascot, I had to learn to do all the cheers also with the, the girls on the squad. Oh, that was a wonderful experience, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And uh, being the mascot, it also afforded me to win a scholarship to Tyler Junior College to be the mascot for them. Uh, they were the Apaches, and they had a college night back at, uh, at South one year. And uh, Tyler Junior College was right there, and they saw that I was in my uh, cheerleader mascot outfit, and they said, well, uh, I met the lady who was the cheerleader sponsor, and he says, we also are an Indian-based mascot. You know, we are the Apaches. Uh, could you look into uh, possibly coming down or getting in contact with our cheerleader sponsor, and maybe you can uh, become our mascot? And luckily, I went down there, and I tried out, and I did become the Tyler Junior College Apache in Tyler, Texas. For how long? Two for, years? For two years, yes. Isn't that great? Oh yeah, and the scholarship, it really helped my folks, you know, with my education. They paid for my tuition and my books, uh, but luckily I was afforded some monies from my tribe uh, to help also with my education to pay for my room and board up there also. Oh, that was great. And when you went to the junior college, did you just take the standard generic uh, uh, curriculum or did was there something special that you wanted to study? Well, um, I thought about the uh, many, many different facets of uh, career uh, choices, but the main thing I chose was accounting. That's what I was very good in general business and accounting. I did take some accounting classes uh, while I was at South also, and I had a, a very good grade point average while I was at South and a very good business mind. Some of my teachers said, uh, for those classes and that's what I aspire to becoming an accountant, a CPA uh, during my college uh, years. Now having the experience of being a warrior and an Apache and, and doing all of these wonderful things, whatever spawned your interest in doing the other dances, the powwows and, and etc. Who was your encourager? Well, uh, my folks, you know, they are, I said, like I said earlier, they are the ones and my inspiration, my source of peace and harmony, and they've always been there. Uh, as I was growing up, 
you know, when I, I was raised here in Grand Prairie, but every summer we would always go back to the reservation because my mom and dad always wanted to establish uh, that part yes. of ourselves to know who we are and where we come from. You know, my brother and I uh, not only knew uh, the city life, but we also knew uh, the ways back onto the reservation. And it was always, I didn't appreciate it then. Uh, you know, I just thought, you know, there, it just was uh, not much to do, but I really appreciated my mom and dad Aren't for doing that Aren't you glad you tolerated that experience? Yeah, because I also got to meet and be with my relatives to play with them, and they taught me, you know, uh, the different languages. They taught me how to ride horses and uh, how to herd sheep and herd cattle and just about everything and farming. And they, you know, established a work ethic for me uh, to take that back here into Grand Prairie and, and when I go back to school. Now, being in the movies, being on television, I mean big time television, <laughs> not like cable here. Uh, tell us about your experience working in Walker, Texas, and Geronimo, and Wishbone, and some of the other things you've done. Well, uh, the, the being in the TV and movies just happened. It was uh, back in 93, uh, my cousin, she called me up because she lives in Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just visited her, visited her a couple of years ago. And uh, she just called me up. and. She said they needed some young Indian guys who were in shape and had long hair because they were making a movie of the life of uh, the great well, Apache warrior chief Geronimo. Yes. And uh, she called me up and said, if you can be here within this certain time to meet with the movie people who are making the Geronimo uh, feature, then uh, please do so. So I got onto a plane that same night Way to I, go. I flew up there because, you know, not too many opportunities do come up. Uh, right. So I decided to do that, and I met with the Geronimo people, and they said, well, as the old adage goes, don't call us, we'll call you. But luckily, I told them, well, I need to kind of know because I'm from Grand Prairie, Texas, and I'm, I'm catching a flight back to go back home. And if you could give me uh, some sort of idea, yes, no, maybe, uh, but they gave me the old adage, don't call us, we'll call you. Uh, they gave me their card, and as soon as I got home, they called me up. They said, can you be here next week to help out and be an extra for uh, uh, one of the Apache warriors out there? So I said yes, and luckily my mom and dad, they were on their way back home to the reservation. So what they did, they dropped me off to Tucson, and I was there for a little over a month and a half uh, shooting the movie out there. Now, that was a good experience, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was something, you know, it, it teaches you a lot about how movies are made and what they do and meeting all the actors and seeing how everything's done. Uh, it changed my way of watching TV and uh, going to the movie saying, hey, I know how they did this and look how at, they did that. You look that. at the details, yeah. don't you? And it just inspires you that maybe, it, you know, I could get into this and hopefully uh, I can do some more later and later. All right. And luckily, I did have some friends with uh, that were with the Walker Texas Ranger people, and they were looking for extras, and uh, they were looking for some Indian powwow dancers also. And uh, some of my friends they knew that I was a powwow dancer, and they said if you could come up here with your powwow outfit, we're going to incorporate it into the story uh, with your style of dress and your dancing. And I've done quite a few episodes with the Walker Texas Ranger. Now, we want to show some of the wonderful uh, memorabilia that you have here, uh, but I want you to talk just a few minutes about the 96 Olympics, the Super Bowl 30, 95 International Special Olympics, the American Indian Art Fest. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was very exciting. Uh, tell us just a little bit about some of the other experiences you've had in those realms. Well, luckily, uh, with my powwow dancing, it has afforded me to be able uh, to dance and travel all over the United States and Canada to different powwows along the powwow circuit. Uh, the powwow circuit is, I guess you could say, the closest comparison is the a rodeo circuit where you go and travel from yes. place to place, from town to town, and you go and dance for contest prize monies. And luckily I have afforded myself to be able to win or place at some of the powwows. And with that, uh, some of my friends and uh, they've asked me to be on different dance troops and we've got to go to uh, 
uh, those spectacular places that you said, like the 96 Olympics, and uh, that was just a wonderful experience, uh, being down there at the same time where people, it's a showcase around the world where not only myself, but every other uh, powwow and champion dancer were there to showcase our singing and dancing in our American Indian uh, heritage, and it was one of the more successful and most visited uh, stages when we were performing out there. That's wonderful, and you have a wonderful investment in all of this, and I believe Mom is a, a great helper in all this. I want you to hold up your uh, your dress that you use. Oh uh, yes, um, oh. my mother and father uh, and myself, oh. we are the ones who Design make, these? Uh, make and design all these outfits, and I buy all the materials myself. I say all within the combination of my outfit, it would have to be somewhere between two and three thousand dollars. Oh yes. It's not that you can buy all these pieces uh, ready-made and as is. You can uh, and order from some people, but it is a lot better, and they established uh, within me to make my own outfits oh. uh, myself. But uh, this is one of the more important pieces that I hold in my hand. Uh, this one drapes across around my waist. This is an apron, my uh -huh. breech cloth, and as I hold, this is the front, and this is the back. Yes. And as you can see, it has many of the different and bright colors. And you have the matching top also. Oh, yes. Uh, the top here is called a cape. It's a cape. Yeah, and it just uh, drapes over the cross, uh, over my body, and it hangs across oh, like this. Oh, it's beautiful. That is just lovely. Uh, just the designs uh, were made by my mother, and just the different intricate pieces, as you can see. Oh. It has the bright, shiny beads and the sequins, and it has a lot of bright colors with the neon greens and yellows and oranges. Is the pattern meaningful to you like uh, like the Aztecs was to them? Is this uh, some of this, some of your designs? Uh, it's, it came from envision of my mind. As you can see, it has many of the diamond shapes yes, that it has that. around. And it means the four corners of the earth, as you can see. And, yes. it, and it goes into a circle. And as you, as you can see, it never stops. It keeps yes. going and going. Yes. This is one piece of memorabilia that I'm very interested in. I think everyone in our viewing audience, these two wonderful shoes that you have, moccasins. Yes, ma'am, that's what they are. They're called moccasins. And, and there uh, are beads, hundreds and hundreds of tiny beads in those. Yeah, uh, it, what most people think, and when they see them from a far distance, they think that they're painted on. Uh -huh. But when they get close and uh, to their inspections, uh, they see that they're each tiny individual beads and a friend of mine, Neshoba Wilson, uh, he's from Oklahoma. And uh, just a quick little story on these. I was getting ready to go to the World Championships over in uh, Mashantucket, Connecticut. And uh, he saw that my other moccasins were not too good a shape, so he decided, uh, and says, I'll make you some new moccasins right here. Uh, if you just buy the materials, I'll do it for you, you know. And so we took a quick trip up to Oklahoma and we bought all the beads and the different materials and such, the buckskin, and it took them two weeks. It, every, it took them two weeks of every day. Uh, he stayed with me for a couple of weeks here in Grand Prairie at my house, and uh, every day he'd wake up, he'd get to work on my moccasins, and right before, until he went to sleep, he'd put them up, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and get to work yes, on them again. He was a real, real close friend then. Oh yeah, he has helped me a lot. I mean, with my uh, moccasins that I have here, they are fully beaded, and uh, these are the designs that he came up. It doesn't match all my beadwork that I have with me, but this is within, I said, well, if you can get it close to my, color scheme, my yes. color scheme, that's fine, but this is, I want to make you something special as a gift, and he didn't charge me anything. Why, just, why are there two of these? And those were my moccasins. Well, as you can see here, this is probably the more uh, stunning pieces that I have on my outfit. And uh, these are called feather bustles. And even though there are only you can only see one right now, there's one underneath, but it's exactly the same as the... Do you wear them at the same time? Yeah, I wear them at the same time. Uh, they go on the back. They're my feather bustles. One goes on the top on my shoulders, and the other one is tied around, around my waist. Hips. Yeah. All right, how about your bells? I'm, I'm really interested oh, in these bells. Oh, my bells, yes. You were asking me about that earlier, what the significance of my bells are. 
And as you can hear, they're very, very uh, noisy right here, especially within this little space. You wear space. those around your arm or where? Oh, no, I wear these around my, uh, just right below my knees, right, right on my shins. And okay. when I dance, uh, the bells hold no special significance, except when we dance, uh, they're to keep the rhythm of the drum and the song going along. And just, oh, uh, that is great. And that's what the bells are more significant right. for. And you have some fuzzy things down on top of the box. I need to know what those are. Oh, yes. Are. Uh, yes, that's what you were asking me earlier also. And uh, this, these little things are, are called Angora uh, goat leggings. And what these are is they're made from Angora goat. And these are two little pieces that also wrap around my shins. All and right. when I have my moccasins on, it looks a lot more prettier than these shoes oh, are. Oh, yes, and then the bell's on top of and that. And then the bell's on top of it. And oh, it also man. adds to just more decoration with my green capes that I have here. Yes. And the special significance for these are is that and when you wear these uh, leggings, you know, you see the mountain goats on top of the mountain. Yes. And they're very sure-footed. They run <laughs> up and down, and they don't slip at all. They said when you're dancing, uh, when you wear these around your shins, that you will have the sure-footedness of that goat on the side of the mountain. Well, isn't that exciting? Also, last year, uh, we invited you to go to Dallas County Court. When the Dallas County Court invited us to bring a group of youth down there for Keep America Beautiful, Keep Texas Beautiful celebration that we have annually, and you all were in your full regalia. Yes, I mean, yes. everything. And when you came to us, we had asked you to come and do us a dance. Yes. And instead of the dance, you did something that was spectacular. Tell us about the ceremony you did honoring Iron Eyes Cody, who is the very famous crying Indian for Keep America Beautiful. Oh, yes. Uh, as we all know, uh, American Indian people have always been environmentalists uh, mm -hmm. throughout. And uh, we're very honored and very privileged that we were asked to do that. Um, we were going to dance, but we came up with something a little bit more special. And what that was, was a blessing of the ground, a smoking of the area. Because, you know, Iron Eyes Cody, he was a, a great person, yes. uh, an icon for uh, not just American Indian people, but for uh, all people within the United States. And environmentalists, environmentalists yeah, oh, yes. especially. And if anybody remembers that commercial, uh, I remember seeing it when I was a young guy, when, you know, when he's walking around and he sees all the trash and then he finally turns around and he has the tear in his eyes, you know, you can't help but having a tear in your eye. But with that, uh, we had a special ceremony. It was, like I said, a blessing of the ground, a smoking, uh, just a purifying of the area uh, at the Dallas County Courthouse. And I do have some of the materials um, that I do have. And I did then, and and we we were there. We are always, <coughs> and this is one of the more spectacular pieces that I have that I did use was uh, what I hold in my hand here, and what most people aren't supposed to have, and uh, what most people ask if it yes that it is real. This is a wing off a of golden eagle, and this is what we use for uh, spreading uh, that smoke that we had. And what we use was a piece of sweet grass that, and this is Canadian sweet grass that a buddy of mine used, and Go had with and that had uh, afforded me uh, to use. And this sweet grass came from Canada, and what we did is that we said a prayer, <laughs> and that we used this sweet grass to purify the air, and we also used a little bit of our tobacco as a blessing of the ground to purify all the happenings and going that did take place at that special ceremony. Now I know that a lot of people will ask uh, how do you get all these eagle feathers you know I have quite a few in my collection in my cedar box you know I didn't get these illegally I had to go through the United States government uh, to get all these uh, uh, different things that come from the eagle and just a story on this that this uh, eagle wing and my mother she has the other half of the eagle wing and this was that I didn't know that my grandmother had had these eagle wings and said maybe one day that one of my grandsons will uh, use this and my mother presented this to me when I was uh, 
when I graduated from South Grand Prairie High School because it was an accomplishment and uh, these eagle feathers are very significant uh, and it's hard for nowadays not only uh, for American Indian students for, but for uh, all teenagers to have an accomplishment such as that as yes. uh, uh, graduating from high school. All right, and these are? And uh, these are also tails of the golden eagle. These are feathers of the golden eagle, and these go on top of my head and for decoration, as you can see. Oh, yes, wonderful. And I would like for you to turn around just a little in the back and let us see your beautiful hair. Yes. Now, uh, uh, it may seem like I have short hair, but uh, just to keep it, I, have, uh, I do have long hair. I did have it long, all one length, but unfortunately when my grandmother passed on, it's always uh, uh, a ritual saying if someone passes on, then a little bit of you dies also. So as a, it, for mourning purposes, I cut off uh, the top and the sides of my hair, but I still have the long length of it. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you have just given us such a wonderful insight. Is there anything else over there that we have? A, we have two more minutes, and we want to talk about anything you want to show and tell, and then, then we're going to talk about something else. Okay. Um, probably the, one of the more uh, other spectacular pieces that I have. Uh, I know a lot of people, when they think of Indians, they think that uh, they all wear war bonnets. But uh, this is my war bonnet right here, and uh, this is something very special. This is called a porcupine headdress roach. And uh, as you can see, the top part here, this is made out of porcupine, uh, the hair guard. And as yes. you all know, that porcupines are very prickly to the touch. But luckily, uh, it has been softened, and now it's uh, real soft to the touch. And also, it, it has, has beautiful movement when you dance, doesn't it? Oh, yes. It's very, uh, when, when I move and dance, it, it dances with me also. And as you can see on the colored part, uh, this is deer tail. And uh, as you can see, it matches also my outfit here also. But like I said, with my other eagle feathers, uh, these two are also on my, uh, go on top of my head. And as you can see, they dance with me also. And these are also golden uh, eagle tail feathers. And uh, this one, it looks like a little mohawk and it goes on top of my head. And when I dance, it moves along with me also. Oh, that is great. All right, in the half minute that we have left, What's next for Mr. Rogers? Well, uh, hopefully um, I'll go to another powwow, travel throughout the, uh, the year. Um, I think there's a couple of other Indian uh, uh, shows that Walker, Texas Ranger will be doing, and I'll, I might be getting a call from there. And also, uh, oh, something special might be coming up. A friend of mine said that uh, he's going to get me, uh, try and get me an audition with uh, another dance troupe and we'll be traveling all throughout the country to different theaters and showcasing our uh, dancing with contemporary and traditional Indian music also. I want to thank you so very much. It's been wonderful to have you with us and thank you for being our very first interview to commemorate the Native American Indian in Grand Prairie, Texas, which should have come on this show a long time ago. Thank you so much, and our wonderful regards to your family and to your brother, and for those of you in the family that are keeping your heritage going. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, to everybody, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, just remember who you are and where you come from, and to all the kids, you know, for me to do this, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any kind of drugs because if I did any of that stuff to my body, I wouldn't be able to do all this or have all this and it would also dishonor uh, my parents and my elders and all my people. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.